One of the best moments to be a landscape photographer is autumn. Why? Simple. The colors, the mists, the fog, the rain that creates gloomy days and powerful clouds in the sky, the beautiful sunrises, the dramatic sunset. I mean, the list can go on, but simply said, it's really awesome to be a landscape photographer in fall. And that is why I prepared for you some tips and ideas on how to shoot landscapes during this beautiful season. And I hope you like them. Let's start. So let's start this list of tips with the sunset from the Dolomites, this is Trecime di Lavaredo, and whenever you can find a small lake to photograph a reflection uh, during sunset, I think it works really good, I think it creates a really powerful image, and it has something that it's very pleasing to look at. Now the next image is again about reflections. Now uh, during autumn you have these beautiful colors in the trees. Um, this, by the way, it's, it's a non-edited photo photographed on neutral. So the colors are, pre are pretty flat and the contrast is pretty flat, but I just wanted to emphasize the idea of what you can photograph. So you can see I have a panoramic format. I'm concentrating only on the forest and its reflection. Now, the beautiful color of the leaves uh, can create some really beautiful patterns in the water. The leaves are falling down in the water. Sometimes you get a, re a, a slow motion because of the wind uh, of the leaves in the water. That would be a really cool moment to do a long exposure. But for this photo, I'm just using the fallen leaves to create a foreground element and uh, to have the viewer pushed into this direction together with this tree to go further in this area over here which uh, is beautifully colored trails in the forest you will see all sorts of trails and you can search for clean trails if you want trails that look good that are wide enough and in this situation for example the lightning is perfect we have uh, shade in this area of the of the image and in the distance we have a little bit of clearance in the forest which means the viewer will be automatically drawn on the trail and go towards the light and all these other elements are just stopping elements elements that force your eye towards uh, the end of the trail now during autumn there are some trees that have uh, their leaves completely red in this situation this tree didn't have the leaves completely red it was a dark red or dark brown but slightly shifting the hue to the left in photoshop managed to i managed to create this impression and i'm using this as a frame in the frame and a way to introduce you and now you see a really powerful rendition of autumn and it's the same thing with this tree I learned to frame trees like this by looking at paintings and this is a thing that I'm always suggesting to all, uh, to all the photographers but especially to beginner photographers take a look at the paintings and we have a simple vertical and then we have a simple line that goes like this and this this way of framing trees works really well and uh, of course if you also have a subject in this area if you are a portrait photographer you can place a person over here and it will look really great now this is shot really really early in the morning um, as you can see I'm exposing for the highlights in the background and the Sun is rising from this from this area over here and that is why these leaves are colorful and uh, you can see details on them but the back of the trees is uh, really dark and uh, this is this is the way I want it to be this is the, the this was the feeling that I had in the forest the idea that behind those trees there's a clearance there's a way of uh, um, experiencing light and also the contrast is really big as you can see i have desaturated the colors in the bark of the trees and all the other colors and i all uh, and i left only the yellow of these leaves now this photo has a really simple composition you have basically two diagonals that intersect in this area and this uh this way of framing creates a sense of depth you have the beautifully colored 
trees in the colors of autumn and then you have the mountain in the background and a little bit of snow in the mountain uh, giving you a hint that maybe autumn is on its end again with the reflection you can go really wide but you can also go really tight the thing that you need to be extra careful when photographing reflection is to understand that um, this this area over here it's two to three stops of light darker and that is why you usually use a gradiated filter in for the top area of two or maybe three stops otherwise it will look strange the two uh, the two images the actual image and the reflected image will not be um, will not have the same luminosity here I had a really interesting moment where these trees uh, are in the light of the sunset but also in shadow because of this of this hill over here so my inspiration for this photo is from the way Michael Kenna frames his forests of course he has another way of presenting the image but the the idea for this composition where I have the trees in this area and then I have a simple diagonal that goes through here and then um, a, a background that it's not distracting that it's not overimposing itself in the photo and of course I have the beautiful light of the sunset hitting those trees and creating a really powerful point of interest over here this image is a uh, let's say a picturesque image of a rural scene you have these uh, these cows it's a farm it's an old mountain village in Romania and we also have the beautiful light of the sunset coming from here and because the light is coming from here the leaves are kind of lit up by this light and uh, in this situation I think backlight works really well to create um, uh, a, an atmosphere almost like a story tale if you want this is again the same village I went up a little higher and now the the Sun dropped down uh, a little more and that is why we have this light that it's almost invading uh, the scene the details are not that good and this is uh, something that always happen when you shoot into the Sun you will have higher contrast but the colors and the details will be lower you'll not see that many details but in this situation I think it works great it works great because in the background we have some newer buildings that are kind of in um, in haze because of the light and your attention will stay here on this uh, old house and some trees and uh, the cows this is another picturesque image with um, a villager up in the mountain carrying something with his horses and his, uh, his carriage and of course we have the light that comes over here now there's a thing in paintings that says whenever the two very big and important lines intersect in uh, in an image there the subject should be so we have this big diagonal of the hill the this line of the road and at the intersection of these two we have the person with the carriage and the horses and this creates uh, a powerful moment when your attention stays over here and we also have this tree in this area which acts like a counterweight to to this part over here it doesn't uh, comes over it doesn't takes over the image it's just an element that creates equilibrium in the image now late autumn if you go up in the mountains you'll see snow so autumn is a, it's also a perfect moment to photograph the mountains just powdered with snow as you can see the the rocks is, uh, are not completely covered and in this photo I'm using these hikers over here to add proportion to this entire landscape and you can also see the pine trees that are covered in um, and snow and the image has something really powerful to it I'm also liking the fact that this diagonal is going up 
and it culminates with this element over here so it's kind of like a journey of these hikers towards something they're not going here because i know the route the trail goes something like this but just as a story just as a way of experiencing the photo i think it works really good this is another rural scene and um, i used a frame in frame if you want idea because i have this line of trees and this background and these two uh, work like elements of separation and this um, this house with the with the animals which is up in the mountains are positioned between these two so basically it's a house that it's in the middle of autumn you can look at it like this this is another way of photographing um, uh, old houses in the mountains we have a cold morning of uh, autumn and we have the smoke of the chimney coming in the upper part autumn is also the moment when you will see lots of fog lots of grim lots of uh, moody days and in this uh, in this situation for example I've chosen to um, to desaturate this image even the yellow of these trees just to have a glimpse of how moody that day was and um, I think the image works really well because you have the first layer of trees and then another layer and then another layer of trees that are kind of barely seen so this is a way of creating depth very easily and that is why I think you should not over edit this type of photos late autumn it's also a great moment to create this um this gathering if you want of autumn and snow and in this situation i use the telephoto lens it's an image shot at 200 millimeters with a full frame body and this hill over here doesn't start right here in the edge of this hill this is the mountain behind this um uh, this hill over here but be because of the 200 millimeters you land uh, lens you get this compression where you almost have these two planes in uh, they they kind of coexist and I think this is a beautiful way to suggest that autumn is on its finish it's on its uh, last meters and uh, winter is coming <laughs> it sounds strange winter is coming but it's coming so again whenever you have a little bit of powder snow on the on the rocks find a yellow tree a, a red tree some some spot of color if you want and you will have a powerful image and this is again that rule i have this big diagonal i have another horizontal and then the tree creates a vertical and right here is where your attention will stay and of course i made sure that the biggest element will be here just to keep your eye over there roads in autumn roads are usually covered with red leaves and this is a very simple composition we have very simple elements and your eye will just stay on the road the spot of color you probably know this photo of mine uh, it was a really gloomy day foggy cold I started the hike on uh, on uh, rain and I almost fall off a cliff to photograph this but it was worth it this large tree I think it looks really great and it it creates a simple image about a different kind of element this is another image where I'm exposing for the highlight and I'm having the light hitting the sunrise light hitting just the leaves uh, this uh, this image concentrates on the idea of capturing of capturing uh, the um, this spot of color over here this is an area of large trees and you can very simply emphasize them and show them in the entire mountain so whenever you have a mountain and you have an element that is different on that mountain you can do that or you can do this this is also an unedited image but you could increase the contrast on the on the rest of the image and you could have this as your uh, as your point of focus 
Now, during autumn, my favorite subject is going to be foggy forests. And if you follow this channel for quite a, <laughs> a few videos, you know that I like photographing inside forests. And in this situation, I found a tree that is different from the rest of the trees, as you can see, and emphasize this tree. Very simple. And of course, this is another moment when the light is hitting this tree. And I also shifted a little bit the colors of these leaves because these leaves are yellow. And I've edited the image in such a way that to, to emphasize the light over here and to add a little bit of darkness in this area so that the viewer looks something, looks over there. And these elements that are darker basically push your eye over there. Now, during autumn, you'll have fallen leaves. And if you have a small creek, a small mountain creek, and you have some leaves on a, uh, on a piece of rock, use that as an entrance point in your image, and it will look really great. For example, this is another case of doing that. We have all these fallen leaves in the, on these rocks. And this is not a big waterfall. If you take a look at this, the size of the leaf, you realize this is not a big waterfall. But uh, I've shot this with the 17 millimeter lens on a full frame body and stayed really low and I created this atmosphere. And of course I have a little bit of light in this area because I want your eye to go over there in the end. You explore the waterfall but you wonder about the light and the distance. This is another very simple image where I've desaturated this part over here and kept the saturation in these um, in, in these hills covered with trees with fallen colors. Uh, now we have a line like this, a line like this, and then at the intersection of these we have the mountain. The mountain is the real point of interest over here, and this mountain is. Um, presented much better with these leaves at its base. It suggests a, uh, something deep that these two areas are very different. During autumn, you have really dramatic sunrises and sunsets. And this is happening with, let's say, 20 minutes before the sunset, the, before the sunrise. And it's also a longer exposure. You can see over here in the movement of these trees, it was very windy but the moment it was really worth it so this was it this was my list of tips and ideas for autumn photography i really hope you like them uh, if you have something to add just use the comment section below please consider subscribing to this youtube channel for more similar videos and vlogs of my journeys in landscapes and if you want to further support my channel you can also buy one of my editing courses the link is in the description of this video and until next time keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better bye bye